Hey guys, welcome to Weapons Workshop. Uh, my name is Joel Messenger, and I'm playing this clip from the Spider-Man How to Hero because it features the weapon we'll be building today, and that is our version of Spider-Man's Web Cannon, is what we're going to be calling it. He just shot that extra in the face with it right there. The idea of the Web Cannon is that it serves the same purpose as Spider-Man's little web balls do when he blinds his opponent, except for when firing from the wrist and being underpowered like every other YouTube video version, this will actually put a substantial amount of web substance downrange into your opponent's eyes or face and will do it accurately and quickly while being fired from the hip and you know also serve some other uses that we'll show you down the line. Let's get right into it. Alright, so as far as materials for this web cannon goes, you're gonna want a barrel slash pressure chamber, you're gonna want a valve, a cap, a little end piece that's for tire valve and some PVC cement, and that's going to be it for this build. So your first order of business should be measuring the length of your pressure chamber slash barrel. I'm shoving this down my pants, as you can see here, to measure the length. This is going to hang around from a loop around your belt I'll show you how to make later. But the point is, is that it shouldn't be longer than your knee at any point during its bend. If it is, then your web cannon will come around and slap your knee as you're running or swinging. Up here, it will only slap your thigh. It will not actually be a hindrance to your movement, which is why you want it to be around this length. Obviously, as long as possible, but never going longer than your knee. So, now that you have your pipe marked out, what you want to do is find that length that I marked right here with the pencil up of my hip, take a hacksaw, bandsaw, really it doesn't matter, and go ahead and cut it to length. Now your length needs to be including the cap, so do what I just did there, and put the cap there to where the line matches with the top of the cap and not the bottom. And then you just cut it with the hacksaw. Now that you have your pipe cut, what you want to do is you want to make another cut in your pipe separation for your ball valve. This is going to be a delicate balancing act between how much air reservoir you want and how much barrel you want. Too little barrel, you won't be able to launch very much material and it will definitely not be accurate. But too much barrel, you'll have a very small pressure chamber, you won't be pushing very much air and even what you do shoot will go three feet and fall down. I find that having a barrel length about uh, two to three inches long is sufficient because just because it's so short and it's so thin in diameter that you really want to maximize that pressure valve. Also, Spider-Man's not exactly a sniper with his web shooters, so you don't really need to be either. Ten feet of range accurately is more than enough. Go ahead and make your cut with a hacksaw and move on to the next step. This next step is designed to where your cannon will actually be allowed to receive air pressure. You'll need your tire valve and your end cap. Take a drill around the same size as your end cap. My end cap choke point was .453 inches wide. It's a very, very common size. Found my piece at AutoZone for like $6. So then you want to take your end cap, get a drill bit around the exact same size and diameter. You want to drill it through the top and bottom. Make sure it is a clean. At this point, you want to get your air nipple through your cap. Very, very simple job. You want to start off by taking some PVC cement, wrapping it around the outside in order to make it a proper seal. Just a couple dabs to do. Make sure to not cover the hole in the inside. Push your air nipple side all the way through. Start pulling and working with it until it gets in. Using your hands may not be enough and you might have to resort to tools. And yes, before you ask, that is a different cannon in the background. That is a rifle version of this same air cannon build. Um, it's for a different video, don't worry about it. My video of me struggling with this air nipple for this particular build was out of focus, so I decided to resort to this one instead. At this point in time, you have all your components, and so it's just assembly. Using PVC cement, always grease the uh, male component, and then add on the female. Then start there at the end cap, move then on to your pressure gauge, and then on to your barrels. It's really really straightforward just make sure that you're always greasing the male end instead of the uh, female end because you grease the female end you could get some pvc cement lodged inside your pipe wall and you just you definitely don't want that because it'll compromise your seal and then at any point you'll have pvc cement coming out the barrel 
And from here it's on to painting your project. Painting is actually a pretty important step as over time with heating up and cooling down the PVC cement will start to pull away from your seals. The paint will help prevent that as well as the fact that if you ever need this for some sort of mission that requires any modicum of stealth, having a white PVC pipe hanging, hanging from your hip is not going to help at all. And, you know, we painted it black instead of red just because black is readily available. It's, it's a lot, uh, generally a lot cheaper paint. Helps seal it and it comes in that nice gloss color that goes along with a lot of other of our edge weapons. And so now we have a fully functional, fully painted, and fully assembled web cannon. Those white marks are, by the way, are not from my paint job. They're from the usage that this web cannon saw over the weekend. We're going to talk ammunition. Get a mixing bowl, get an alcohol-based soap, get some scotch tape to seal it there on the end, and then get some powdered sugar or flour. I chose powdered sugar because I had made this ammunition before and I wanted to make it as sticky as possible. Start in, add in some powdered sugar. I filled this up all the way at the top accidentally. You want to leave a little bit of room for your alcohol. As you go, the alcohol is going to eat away or absorb your, uh, they're going to absorb your flour, your powdered sugar that you're adding. So you want to add a very liberal amount of this soap because however much soap you add is how big your globule is going to be. However much soap there is in here, it's not really going to bind and make a semi-solid. You're really making a liquid and then oversaturating it with this. So you want to take your spoon, mix it around. As you mix it around, it's going to take that color of that Germex and almost instantaneously it's going to get rid of that whatever um, <clears throat> substance you add to it, be it flour or sugar. Once it gets all the way down and it looks looking more like a liquid, you want to add more sugar. You want to add, fill it up all the way to the top. This stuff is going to eat sugar, guys. So you're going to get these little granules, you're going to get these little globules in there, and you just want to keep adding sugar and keep stirring it down, and keep adding sugar and keep stirring it down. And as you do it, your globule will get larger and larger, and your substance will get stickier and stickier. And when you have enough of your substance that you want, then you're going to stop. For this, I only needed really two shots to test. So this little cup only provided me two shots. It's, it, gave, it gave me two little packets worth of ammunition. So, like I said, just keep mixing until you have what you want. Test its consistency by picking it up. And then when you're done, you're going to want to muzzle load your cannon full of your ammunition. That was just a really sticky mess on the video, so I decided not to include it. Just fill it there in the barrel with make sure that your barrel is closed when you do. So then seal the top with scotch tape. Now that you have your cannon loaded, you want to practice firing it from the hip as we did in the HTH. So that little paracord bracelet that I showed you is going to be my rigging. I went ahead and weaved it before this video, one for the 4th of July, but two also for this video because as it's about the size of my wrist, it is also about the size and width of the closed valve of the cannon. It hangs, I can move, I can run, I can jump, I can do whatever, I can swing my hips around. It's not going to fall out, thankfully, and it's not going to go up or down which is perfect, right where we want it. Now, you're gonna charge this weapon. You're gonna take a regular bicycle pump, put your hose there on the end, and pump it up. Now, with as short as my uh, pressure vessel is there, these four pumps that you're about to see jack it up all the way to 100 PSI. You gotta be really, really careful because Schedule 40 is only rated at 280 PSI. But, once it's charged up, go ahead and release it, and you're good to go. Now on to testing. Unfortunately, it was nighttime by the time we actually got around to it in the build. So I have a shop light pointed at this AR-500 armor and I'm standing about 15 feet away. Now this was fired from the hip. As you can see, it splatters onto the chest area, which, you know, firing from the hip quick draw, never using as well before, I thought was pretty good. But as you can see from the slowness at which it descends, this is incredibly viscous. It's incredibly, incredibly sticky. We're going to get a close-up here for a second, wait for it to focus. It really sticks to wherever it hits, applying that alcohol directly to it and descends very, very slowly. You had a Ziploc bag. I can just press it up against here and it sticks. I mean, look at that. And it slowly descends, pulling it away. So it's incredibly sticky. However, the lack of accuracy still really concerned me, so I went ahead and tried for another shot, this time aiming for the face and actually aiming. As you can see, I hit right where about his eyes could be, but for this I had to pull it out of the holster, pick it up and aim. 
I'm sure with some accuracy practice as outlined in the Spider-Man HTH, you would be able to very, very easily attain this shot from the hip as, like I said, I was only 10 feet away, but it just really smacks right into the armor. It drips down very, very slowly, and if, you know, properly applied, you can get it into the eyes or at the very least make your opponent very, very uncomfortable with the fact he has. Well, guys, that's it for the Spider-Man web shooter, and as I said, it's specifically designed so that later on you can put other things in it, not just Spider-Man webs. We'll be using it for other videos, and we'll be referencing back to this video for the web shooter. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like and subscribe to the channel, and stay posted for more Weapons Workshop showing you how to make practical superhero weapons. I'm Joel Messenger, signing out.